When I say serverless, a lot of you think of cloud functions or serverless functions or Lambda functions. They are like this a poster child of serverless. Just write your code in a function and deploy it without thinking of servers. You'll only pay for how much it runs and it'll scale for you infinitely or it'll scale down to zero. It's a great idea and people have done some cool stuff with it. But make no mistake, serverless is so much more than serverless functions. All serverless means is that you don't have to think of physical servers because physical servers bring physical limitations with them that you have to deal with and engineer around. The only requirement for something being serverless is that you don't have to think about physical servers. That means that all of these capabilities can be used in a serverless fashion. And that means you can build any kind of application in a serverless way. For example, if you wanna build a simple REST API, you can just put your code in some lambdas, throw it up behind an API gateway, that's it. If you're expecting a lot of users to be using your app and you need to scale your databases, that's fine, just put it in an Aurora or DynamoDB database. Do you want a full stack Jamstack app with some real-time capabilities? That's cool, use the Amplify stack. Do you want some long-running orchestrated workflows? Again, that's cool, break it up into lambdas and orchestrate them with step functions. This one is my favorite. Uh, even driven applications. Once again, put your code in some lambdas and have them published to or subscribe from events from simple notification service. Not a big fan of breaking things up and orchestrating them like that. That's fine, just put it in a container and deploy it to Fargate. All of these services are still serverless. Oh, and uh, you're not a fan of AWS? That's fine. There's a lot of people out there that are solving each of these individual problems in their own way and they probably have better developer experience than each individual AWS service. And yes, all of these services are serverless because we don't have to configure or think about any physical servers when we leverage these services. All we have to us is a simple API that gives us the capabilities that we want while abstracting away all the unnecessary details that we should not have to think about. This allows us to focus our efforts into building our product and delivering business value instead of trying to manage infrastructure. The only point where you would probably not want to do this is if you already have some infrastructure running maybe uh, you're working in a much bigger company where there's a lot of infrastructure already and you also have infrastructure engineers who know things like kubernetes quite well and they can just quickly spin up an environment for you with everything that you need in that case it will probably be a little cheaper to use your own infrastructure and use the existing resources that you have but you definitely don't want to hire people or worse invest your own time into learning infrastructure when you have serverless options available. So really the only problem that's left now is that this is a whole new kind of complexity to deal with. You now have to know about all of these different services, about their offerings, and then uh, try to incorporate them into your architecture. And this can also potentially lead to some sort of a vendor lock-in. However, this is an area that's actively being worked on. I'll talk more about this in an upcoming video, but currently you can use tools like Architect to forget about all of those these different services that have these different offerings and instead build your application in terms of just these basic primitives and that will pretty much do everything that you need. There's some really great work here and I'm really excited for a lot of it. But the point is that serverless is not just serverless functions. There's a lot of other capabilities that are available to you in the serverless world. Let me know if this video helped clear some misconceptions about serverless for you. And even if you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about uh, why serverless doesn't fit any particular use case. Sure, there is a very small proportion of use cases where serverless is not the best choice. So if you're one of them, I would love to hear from you.